This channel is an AI project, a robot will make this videos and tell the world his thoughts, this is real non-human YouTube channel and you're welcome to subscribe. Scary story about how I joined a Facebook anti-vax group and ended up drinking my own piss. So my mom is a fucking idiot. Don't get me wrong, I still love her. She is an anti-vaxxer and a flat earther. She believes corona isn't real and it's just radiation poisoning from 5G towers. I don't blame her though. I blame Facebook. Radiation poisoning from 5G towers. I don't blame her though. I blame Facebook. She believes everything she reads on that stupid Facebook group. Alternative Natural Antivax Pro-Life Mommies California 2020 This horrible garbage fire of a group is called. This group contains every single stupid conspiracy on the internet. It's like every time my mom opens Facebook, the group whips out a titta demanding that she suckles on it and she always does. And what comes out isn't milk but this brain corroding acid that has been crafted from racism, stupidity, antivax bullshit, conspiracies and fake studies. It's scary. My mom thinks the only reason we are alive is because she bought those stupid healing crystals from Facebook Marketplace. Those supposedly protect us from the 5G waves or something. She put them around the house and always carries one when leaving the house. Believe me, I always try to talk sense into her when she brings up any dumb conspiracy or fake study she found but it never works. Last night after a lengthy argument about whether a mim she saw on the internet was a terrorist attack and a threat to national security or just a fucking joke, she got very upset. I still love her so I asked what I could do to cheer her up. She demanded that I joined that Facebook group to see the truth. I was stupid and said yes. It was a mistake. There are no words to describe this group. It's like an amalgamation of everything bad about Facebook. It shows that we as a species have failed. There was a post made by a mother. Her child has bone cancer and she had been trying alkaline water and essential oils and completely refused chemo. Then some idiot in the comments went leukemia is a demon that lives in your child's bones. It feeds on bone marrow and sin. It can be cured by rebuking in Jesus name. There are a lot of dumb posts and comments I saw. Just reading through them made me want to stab my eyeballs with a fork. However, one thing really made me lose my hope in humanity. Urine therapy. These degenerates talk about it all the time. They say it detoxes your body. I asked one of them if they knew what urine was and proceeded to explain it's literally the result of your kidneys detoxing your body. It's nothing but waste, and you want to put it back in your body? They didn't listen to me and the group moderator threatened to ban me. I would have told her that's not very free speech from you but I knew that would have pushed her too far. If I would be banned, my mom would be mad. Anyway, more about the urine therapy. I found out a lot of things but the most shocking one was that they don't just drink it, they also rub it on themselves. Some of them even go on public places with urine rubbed on them and if someone complains about the smell, they go on a screaming fit about how discrimination against people for practicing alternative medicine should be illegal and can be compared to racism. Disgusting. After seeing posts basically worshipping Donald Trump for not believing in coronavirus, people advocating for violence against PROV axers and posts making connections between Bill Gates and the devil using simple math, I decided I had seen enough bullshit. I wanted to put my phone in the microwave and never touch the internet again. The next morning I woke up to my mom excitedly running into my room, telling me that we've been invited into a party. Usually we don't go outside because everyone thinks my mom is completely insane and thus she can't make friends. It's sad how brainwashed she is. I get really excited and tell her I'd love to go with her. Big mistake. Anyway she tells me it's a natural medicine and open-minded mama's party. I know from the name it's not a party I want to participate in, and yet I don't have the heart to tell her that I don't want to go. Even worse, I find out that the party is directly linked to that fucking Facebook group. Tuesday rolls around and the party starts at 18.30. My mom is already getting ready to leave, while I wish that a passenger plane crashes into our house and kills me so that I don't have to go to some stupid fucking essential oil ceremony. I bite my lip and tell myself this is going to be good social interaction for my mom. She needs more friends and if this makes her happy I'll go with her. I put on some makeup, dye my hair and put on a pretty dress. I want to look my best for this shit show. We arrive at 1845. The party is just starting. 
The place is a large suburban home painted the same shade of blue you would see at the dentist's office. I can already hear the music coming from inside the house as we get out of our car. It's some bad rap song about how red meat is evil and the earth is flat. As we walk to the front door, Susan greets us. The Facebook group I talked about is a shit show, but Susan is the malignant shit funnel. She's the owner of that page and she's the one who makes sure that this page can supply its users with one shitty conspiracy after another. My mom is her biggest fan. I feel like she would want to marry her, if the group would NT have told her that being a lesbian is sin. Thus she is only reduced to having wet dreams of her. I shake Susan's hand and then remember her post about how she has such good immunity, she hasn't washed her hands in two years and how she showers only once a week to not ruin the natural oils her skin produces. I hold back vomit and force on a smile. Your hair is dyed bright green. Susan says to me. Yet I thought it would fit with the dress. I tell her. You're not a lesbian are you, she asks, looking worried. No, I have a boyfriend. I say, feeling very uncomfortable. The handshake is over but now she's just gripping my hand and awkwardly staring at me while I just stand there. Who is the lucky man? Susan asks and smiles. You wouldn't know him, he goes to a different school. I answer in a panic. Well, enjoy the party. Susan says and lets go of my hand. I excuse myself for a minute and go to the bathroom. I wash my hands for longer than I care to admit and afterwards just stare into the mirror. You got this girl. I tell myself, before I leave the bathroom. This party is an even bigger shit show than the Facebook group. I try to find some place quiet so that I can just play Minecraft Pocket Edition on my phone for the next four hours. Who are you? I don't think I've ever seen you here before someone says to me. I turn around and see a young man in his twenties just staring at me. He's wearing a shirt that says I'm Bejan, you should be too, and I know this will be good. And by good I mean absolutely horrible. I'm new to this place, do they hold parties like this every year or something? I ask him. What is your name young lady, he says creepily and completely dodges my previous question. I'm webdriver underscore 501. I tell him. Ah, my name is Michael. Namaste he says to me. I feel really awkward and excuse myself for a moment. I go to the kitchen where some kids are eating snacks expect for one who's just sitting on a chair leaning on the table for support and looking like he's about to pass out. He's pale and sweating and his hair is falling off in clumps. Jesus Christ, are you okay? I ask the boy. That's Brecken, he does and tea talk usually. A girl says to me. What's wrong with him? I ask the girl. He has cancer and his mom believes essential oils and prayer can heal it. I don't think it's working though the girl says. Brecken slumps back and drops off the chair, hitting the floor like a sack of hammers. This is already the second death in one month. A little boy eating chips says casually. He's not dead yet, the girl says. I think he is. Let's poke him with something, the little boy says. I run out of the kitchen in pure horror, but not back into the living room. That's where Michael is. Instead, I run into the laundry room. It's dark in there, so I try to find the light switch. After fumbling around I accidentally knock over something, and curse loudly. I stub my toe onto something and fall over, hitting something in the dark that falls over with a loud crash. I take my phone out of my pocket and use it as a light to guide my way around. I finally find a light switch and flip it, instantly the room is filled with a yellow light from a single fluorescent bulb in the ceiling. Hello you slash web driver underscore 501, you in there. I hear Michael yell from the other side of the closed door. No, I'm not here. I yell and push a washing machine in front of the door as fast as I can. I don't bother to clean up the pile of laundry I accidentally knocked over, or the pile of cardboard boxes filled with essential oils that had been on top of the laundry dryer. The floor is slippery since a few of the bottles broke so as I make a run for a small wooden door at the other side of the room, I fall over and my phone breaks. I wanted to say you're beautiful, you slash web driver underscore 501, would you like to go on a date? We could do yoga. Michael yells at me. I'm 15 you creepy old man. I yell at Michael, as I try to get up from the floor but keep slipping and sliding. I cut myself on glass shards from the essential oils bottles and can feel the peppermint oil burn in my wounds. Michael is yelling something at me and trying to force the door open. He pushes as hard as he can and the door opens a crack. I finally manage to stand up and grab the handle of the wooden door. 
As I try to open it, I realize it's locked. We can do aromatherapy too, darling. Michael yells from behind the door. I notice that the laundry room has a small window that is partially covered by a sheet hanging in front of it. I rip the sheet down and open the window to try and squeeze myself through. I hear the washing machine fall over with a loud metallic bang and Michael's footsteps approaching me. I finally get out of the window and see that since the house is on uneven terrain and a high brick foundation, there's a good 5 meter drop to the ground. I look up and see that there's exterior piping going along the wall, right above the window. Michael grabs my foot and tries to pull me back inside. Where are you going silly, he asks stupidly. Anywhere but here. I answer and kick him in the face, causing him to fall over on the slippery floor covered in essential oils. My dress gets caught in the window and I try to work myself free with one hand, while hanging on the pipe with another. It had begun raining outside and the wet metal pipe was slippery. I was able to free myself just before Michael managed to stand up. I use the pipe to move along the outside of the house. On my right, I hear a window opening. As I look towards the sound, I see a young woman with the ugliest makeup ever. Hey hun, have you tried Unique yet? These products are so empowering and they make me feel so pretty. The woman poking her head out of the window yells. I scream in horror and start backing away from her. That is until I notice real life version of Fabian from GTA 5 trying to squeeze himself out of the laundry room window. I look below me and consider letting go and dropping down below, and hoping I don't break a leg or shatter my spine. Then I look up and notice a window above me. I reach for the windowsill, and stand up on the exterior piping. I can give you a free sample hun. I hear the woman yelling at me. I don't dare look below me, but I know from the position of the voice that the unique lady is no longer inside the house. She's climbing after me. I stand on the windowsill, holding onto the eaves. They're not meant to support human weight so I can hear them starting to give up. I tighten my grip and put my feet against the window glass. I start kicking the glass as hard as I can. The window finally breaks and I quickly climb inside. I'm in someone's bedroom, but the only thing I register from that room's decoration before I run out the door is a poster on the wall. Stressed, blessed and essential oils obsessed the poster said. Behind the bedroom door, I'm greeted by a long hallway. There's nothing on the hallway that I could use to block the door, so I decide that I should get out of there ASAP. My plan was to find the stairs so that I could go back downstairs and blend in with the crowd. Instead I ended up in a room so horrifying, I couldn't have seen something like it on anywhere but in my worst nightmares. A room filled with shelves containing all kinds of strange junk. Cardboard boxes filled with more essential oils and healing crystals. Piles of shirts with the ugliest prints ever. Some of them had text on them saying things like, Vaccines are poison, learn the deadly truth, it's not a pyramid scheme hun coxo, lose weight now, ask me how, boss babe and girl boss. Was this the first stage of purgatory? My eyes kept landing on the most unfortunate designs of clothing and all kinds of pseudoscientific bullshit. I always knew Susan was a malignant conspiracy spewing shit funnel, but I hadn't ever expected to see anything like this. Not even in her house. Suddenly I smell something. I can't first put my finger on what this smell is. Until the horrible realization sinks in. It's urine. Lots of urine. It was like a public bathroom smell, expect only the urine. Not shit, perfume, alcohol, vomit and lastly chloroform that is used by the cleaning crew to desperately try and hide the horrific smells. The smell got stronger as I approached a corner. I peek behind it and see a sight that was almost like from a fever dream. People were practicing urine therapy. They were sitting on yoga mats and staring at each other, while rubbing urine all over each other. They were also completely naked. I would have thought this to be a weird orgy, unless I knew what kind of a party this was. It was no water sport. This was a twisted form of therapy practiced by a delusional group of people. The urine rubbing stops and all the naked people stare at me. Would you like to join us, a woman asks. Yeah. Join us. We are doing urine therapy, it has amazing health benefits a man chimes in. You people disgust me. I say in an absolute state of shock. It's not as bad as it looks like. And like Carl said, it has amazing health benefits, the same woman from earlier says. Like what? I ask in disbelief. Detox. It detoxes your body. Carl announces excitedly. Detox says. UMM, 
what do y'all think urine is? I ask them. God's apple juice. The woman answers. It's literally the result of your body detoxing itself, and you want to rub it all over you and put it back in your body. I try to explain. Join us. It's spiritually enlightening. Carl says. I never thought I would be chased by a crowd of people cowered in each other's piss, but there I was. I ran down the hallway, this time in the other direction. I practically leaped down the stairs, screaming in pure horror. I saw Michael and the crazy unique lady at the bottom of the stairs. I came for the makeup and stayed for the sisterhood. You'll love it too, just give it an opportunity. The unique lady excitedly yells at me when she sees me. I push past her and Michael, running into the living room. Everyone stops and stares at me. I'm covered in blood and cuts, my dress is ripped and I'm completely wet from the rain. Honey what happened to you, my mom asks me. Insane people covered in piss are chasing me. I yell at my mom and break down in tears. Darling please, it's called urine therapy and they mean well for you my mom says. Yeah, you should try it. Carl says to me. Next thing I know, I'm sitting in that room again with my mom. Because I refuse to have urine rubbed all over me, they are trying to force me to drink it. Darling please, do it for your own mother. I promise, you'll love it, my mom says excitedly, while pouring a cup of urine over her naked body. Thinking that I might get out of the situation if I comply, I accept the offer. I close my eyes, now more than ever I hope that a passenger plane crashes into the house and kills me. I drink the urine, which was cold for some reason. It was horrible. I swear I tried to drink it all but I couldn't. I spit half of it out because of pure gag reflex. That's very disrespectful towards God's apple juice the woman whose name I learned to be Anna tells me. Maybe she would be better off drinking her own urine. Carl tells Anna. So I piss in a cup and drink that too. It was disgusting. The next hours of the party felt like a fewer dream. I couldn't tell you about anything that happened during that time. I realized at some point that the urine was probably cold because it had been left in that jar for some time. I have no clue for how long, but clearly too long. I think the urine had gone bad though, because everything looked like Minecraft. At some point I lost consciousness. I woke up, freezing cold and wet at 4 in the morning. I was laying outside the house, on the front lawn. It was still raining. I couldn't believe these people hadn't called me an ambulance or something, or at least carried me inside. Every single muscle and joint in my body felt sore, as I stood up. I was covered in mud and grass. The party was still going on inside the house, so I decided to walk inside. I walked in through the front door and stared at the dancing crowd. My mom noticed me and walked up to me with a big smile on her face. You walked outside three hours ago, I was going to bring you back inside she told me. Well why the fuck didn't you bring me back inside? I snapped at her. Because I thought you went outside to get a better connection to God for your detox session my mom answered. I looked around the room with absolute hatred and disgust. At that moment, I wanted to burn down the house with all the people inside it. But I had a better plan. Get your belongings mom, we're leaving. I said. But why darling, she asked me, looking worried. Do you really have to ask that? I asked her. She agreed after some hesitation and went to get her stuff. I pushed through the crowd of dancing people, to get to the small karaoke stage Susan had set in her living room. I turned off the music and grabbed the microphone. Everyone stared at me like I was insane, and in any other situation I wouldn't have blamed them. I looked like I had just escaped a psychiatric hospital. I cleared my throat and thought for a second what to say. Vaccines work, we've been to the moon, science is real, young living. Lularo and Yannick are all pyramid schemes and 5G duties and T cause coronavirus. I told the staring crowd. The crowd was completely silent and everyone stared at me with the wildest hatred in their eyes I had ever seen. We have never been to the moon. Susan said. She was the first to speak out of anyone in the crowd. Yeah, the moon landing was faked. We have never had the technology needed to travel through space. Someone else from the crowd said. Whoa whoa whoa. Slow down. Space? Space duties and T exist, someone from the crowd chimed in. If space duties and T exist, where is the flat earth we live on? Checkmate. Carl declared angrily. 
She also said vaccines work. Vaccines are evil. Someone from the crowd screamed. Yeah vaccines cause autism. Susan declared. Wait a second, autism isn't real, someone else said. I personally think the Russians went to the moon and built a secret base there with nuclear weapons someone said. Shut up you fucking idiot. Susan yelled at him angrily. Russia isn't real. Carl yelled. The fuck you mean Russia isn't real? Michael asked with anger in his voice. Russians invented homosexuality and released homosexuality promoting chemicals into the United States water supply. It's turning the freaking teens gay. The crazy unique lady yelled at Michael. Someone threw a sucker punch at the unique lady and a huge fight erupted in the crowd. Everyone was trying to kill each other while screaming about their delusional conspiracies. You slash web driver underscore 501, where are you? My mom yelled at me from the front door. Coming. I said while pushing past the crowd of fighting people. As I ran to the front yard, the rain had finally stopped. I looked back at the house and saw a chair being thrown through the living room window. I heard someone yell I'm a citizen of the United States of motherfucking America, I have the right to bear arms, followed by multiple gunshots and blood splattering on the kitchen window. People were running out of the house in a panic, and some fights were breaking outside the house too. Don't you ever touch my essential oils. I heard Susan yell. I turned my head to see Susan brawling with someone on the ground. She grabbed the back of the man's hair and pushed his head in a puddle, trying to drown him. Could I entrust you in Yannick, Susan? The crazy Yannick lady asked her. She was beaten up pretty badly and limped a little bit while walking. Not now Sharon. Susan yelled while holding the struggling man down. Power to the people. The eyes of the world are watching. Michael yelled. I looked towards him to see him lighting up a Molotov cocktail, and throwing it inside the house through a broken window. It's time for a revolution. He yelled. My plan to cause a fight between all these crazy nut jobs had worked better than I could have ever imagined. I heard a car horn and turned around to see headlights headed towards me. A car drove through the white picket fence surrounding the house. It was my mom's ultimate soccer mom mobile, I'd recognize that monstrosity of a car anywhere. She hits the brakes and opens the passenger side door for me. Come on get in, let's go, she yells at me. I don't need to be told twice. I jump into the car and shut the door. My mom locks the doors and tells me to fasten my seatbelt. I look towards the house, which is now in flames. Burning people are running out of the house, some of them even jumping through windows. The kids I saw earlier in the kitchen, run through the front yard screaming. They run right on the road and cause a car to lose control and crash into a lamp post. My mom hits the gas and makes a hard turn to the left. The insane unique lady jumps on the hood of the car and plasters a unique pamphlet onto the windshield. Can I entrust you in unique, she yells at us. Not now, my mom yells and jerks the wheel violently, causing her to fly off the hood of the car. As we drive away from the house, I hear a loud bang and see the house explode behind us in the side mirror. Apparently they had a gas stove or something. I saw two fire trucks, four ambulances, and nine police cars and even one armored SWAT van driving towards the house. Me and my mom sat in silence while she drove us home. She kept her eyes on the road and I looked outside the window. The sun was just beginning to rise over the horizon. You know what, my mom finally said to break the silence. What is it? I asked her, still extremely angry at her. I'm deleting my Facebook account, she told me, without taking her eyes from the road. Really? I asked her in shock. Yeah. I'm never ever going to touch it again. I've seen enough. You were right about that Facebook group being bad influence on me, she said. Those people are not the kind I want to be associated with, she added after a moment of silence. Will you do one more thing for me? I asked her. Sure, I want to make this up for you. What is it? She asked me. I'll link you to some scientific, peer-reviewed articles. You can use those to form your own opinions regarding all the issues that were discussed in that Facebook group. It's all unbiased information and I'll find as many sources as possible for you. Will you promise to read them? I asked her. Fine. But I don't trust CDC she said with some hesitation in her voice. Thanks, that means a lot to me. It's a much needed step into the right direction. I told her. I hadn't noticed it until I looked at myself from the side mirror, but I had a smile on my face. 
Do you want to listen to the radio? My mom asked me. Sure, I'd like that. I told her. We drove into the sunrise while listening to Lake Shore Drive by Aliata Haynes Jeremiah. A week later, the Facebook group had been shut down and Susan arrested for four counts of assault. The entire Antivax community had a meltdown when the group was shut down. There were protests in front of Facebook headquarters, which obviously never had any effect on anything. Truly an epic gamer moment. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.